Hello, everyone. Welcome to theCUBE's special presentation of the AWS Startup Showcase on cybersecurity. This is season three, episode three in the ongoing series covering the certain range of startups with the Amazon ecosystem. I'm your host, John Furrier. Today we're excited to have Clint Sharp here back on theCUBE, co-founder and CEO of Cribble, and Ryan Orsi, worldwide head of Cloud Foundations Partners of AWS, here to talk about the rise of security data lakes. Gents, thanks for joining us today. Hey, thanks, John. Great to be back. Ryan, first question to you is, Amazon's got the security data lake, been all in the news, everyone's been talking about, it. you guys doing shows on there, on Security Live, on AWS, on this. What is Amazon's security lake and what problem does it solve? Give us a quick overview of, of the security lake. Sure, sure, and thanks for having us, John. Yeah, uh, Amazon Security Lake, it's a purpose-built data lake specifically for cybersecurity style logging and telemetry. Um, it, it, it can accept sources from within your AWS accounts, uh, other, other environments outside AWS on premises, uh, and it standardizes it into a, a single sort of logging format on the OCSF or the Open Cybersecurity Schema Framework. So it's really streamlining and making that process very easy for people to collect all of their security logging information, wherever it may be, and put it into Amazon Security Lake in a standardized format. Clint, you've been on theCUBE many times. Your company's doing extremely well, you know, from the old days of streaming data. Now data is the center of all the AI that are powering everything. The security data lake is a beautiful resource uh, to add value for the practitioners and also solve a lot of the automation problems and also scale with AI. What's your role, what's Cribble's role with the Amazon security lake? Yeah, for sure. So, you know, Cribble's uh, the data engine for IT and security and we, our stream product helps AWS customers get data into their security data lake from from outside. So, you know, almost all the enterprises that we're talking to today live in a complex world full of on-premises infrastructure that they're marrying with the cloud, that they're marrying with their network data sources like firewalls and their uh, EDR type of data that's all coming from different places. And Security Lake is a fantastic way for them to unify all of this data in one central place for analysis. Uh, you know, future data mining and, and AI potential in there as well. Uh, and our stream product helps them integrate all those data sources that are not AWS native data sources and get that data into security data lake in an OCSF compliant uh, way so that they can use it along with all their other data. You know, everyone's talking about security, obviously in the role of data. I mentioned AI earlier. Security is, is a big hot area. Also the infrastructure, getting all this together uh, all this data together in real time, and also previous data is being a big discussion. How do you lay out the architecture? Guys, cloud architecture is huge when you talk about security, specifically around this new paradigm coming. Um, you know, foundations partners, I love that title, Ryan, in your, in your title, because cloud security is actually not only viable, but it's actually a preferred method for enterprises to start thinking about the future. As they start thinking about planning for the AI wave that's here, and everyone wants to be well positioned for that. So what's, the, what's been the response from customers, obviously on the security data is central to this, where are they using it today and how do they see that roadmap going forward? Sure, yeah, I mean, the, I'd say, you know, the, the use cases we're seeing emerge right now uh, for Amazon Security Lake specifically are pretty exciting to watch. And I, it's, it's happening as, you know, even, even beyond what we imagined of providing this, this service to, to the, the, the market segment out there. Customers are definitely uh, aggregating their AWS logs. They're definitely pulling from other clouds and on-premise sources. I'm really excited that Cribble's here today because I will say, you know, making that process easier to ingest whatever kind of log you have out there for a holistic picture uh, for again, for not just threat hunting, but maybe even incident response and investigation to figure out, for example, a user or an identity maybe has suffered a stolen credential -ish situation. And the, the investigator, the hunter is trying to figure out what other resources in what environment did that, that uh, credential access. Uh, that's where it's really, really important from a customer perspective. And we're starting to see this emerge, stitching together a holistic picture of what other resources that particular role or user accounts or even some of the machine account had access to. So we're definitely seeing visibility and correlation amongst multiple different data sources become a lot easier for customers to do. Uh, and we're seeing partners like Cribble step up and really make that ingestion process, no matter where the logs are coming from, 
a whole lot easier. And I think that's really going to help accelerate even more innovative ideas getting into yeah. predictive uh, response, pr predictive remediation, uh, when you have so much of that visible data in one spot. Previously, it, it had to be stitched together. It had to be moved. It was in proprietary storage locations and proprietary logging formats. Clint, you guys are well positioned both in the IT, the new IT I call it, as well as the cloud, and now security data lake. You're bridging that. What's your customers see here? Give us a quick insight into how their use cases are, what they're thinking, and how are they preparing for the future with security, the security lake? Yeah, so I think the core problem that our customers are seeing is around data growth. Their, their data is growing at a 25% CAGR. Their budget is not. And ultimately, how do I retain all the data I need for the potential years back that I need to go back to do a breach investigation? How do I do that cost effectively? And one of the things that we think Security Data Lake is so exciting is because it's open, the formats are open, the data is owned by the customers, uh, and there are multiple things that can go in and get and get value out of that data, including our search product, which, which we're very excited about because the, the use case for Security Data Lake is, hey, I need to go back you know, six months, a year, and go investigate you know, this threat that I've just discovered. Uh, how do I do that without having to move all the data? And our, our search product is, is an amazing opportunity for customers to go search that data in place and go really doing the deep dive into the data lake. That's the reason why we're retaining all this data is so that if something bad happens, we have the ability to go back in time and really tell the enterprise with some assurance what actually happened, you know, with that particular threat. And so, uh, you know, this is really where, where customers are getting really excited is about the really long retention and the ability to keep massive volumes of data that's required to secure their enterprises. What's the alternative, Clint, for not having that search? Um, you mentioned that's a key use case. What's the old way? What's, what was the previous um, alternative? Yeah, so I think that it kind of goes against what Security Lake stands for, which is to centralize all the data. But uh, most of the people in the market today are then lifting that data back up, making a copy and moving it into some of their engine. And, and that's fine if it solves the problem. I mean, ultimately, users are already familiar with these tools. Uh, they know how to work with them. Our stream product can help with that. We can help lift the data out of Security Data Lake and move it into other repositories. But being able to search that in place, especially since you know, a lot of this data is completely worthless until suddenly it's the most valuable data set in the enterprise. And so having multiple copies of it everywhere really starts to add up, yeah. add the cost up very quickly. Yeah, data, data movement is huge. So um, on the search piece of cybersecurity and the data lake, what's the main um, headroom that people are going to grow into as data comes in? You mentioned data is growing, massive rate, budgets aren't. Is this an operational benefit? Is it more insights? What's the or is it prevention or is it all the above? What's, <laughs> what's the benefits that come out of the, um, the, the data, security data and your search in particular? Yeah, so I think it's retention and the ability to, to have, you know, kind of all of this data centralized. And really you can't ask questions of data you don't have. And if you can't cost effectively store it, and I think this is where AWS is leading the market is offering customers open alternatives to be able to keep all this data cost effectively because compliance is driving a lot of this. For a lot of our customers, they have retention needs that may go up to like seven years plus. Uh, and the idea of just you know, wheeling hard drives into data centers to store all of this data is just not cost effective. And uh, we're seeing even a lot of our on-prem, you know, staunchly on-premises customers looking at security data lake as the place where they're going to go put all this data because it's the only way that they can afford to meet their compliance requirements. Ryan, what's the large trend that's powering and driving this data lake for cybersecurity? Um, obviously a no-brainer, you can see the value. Is it just pressure? Is it more enabling now? Is it good timing? What's the driver for the movement towards the data lake for cybersecurity? Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a tough problem for the entire side. And this, I'm speaking from personal experience in the cybersecurity industry for many, many years. This is a tough problem. Um, I, I don't like personally to hear that people have to make trade-offs of what logging and telemetry sources to turn on or off or how long to store those logs. And they're up against regulatory compliance pressures, retention periods like Clint mentioned. Those have all been traditional challenges, or I should say, you know, undesirable trade-offs in cybersecurity as, as an industry. You know, we at, at AWS, very customer obsessed. I've been doing a lot of, of research and investigations and just listening to our field teams that are connected to some of the largest enterprises in the world on, on how could we possibly solve or help, help 
alleviate that issue a little bit for those those people out there that have these trade offs. Uh, so really, I'd say, you know, timing, timing is, is something we could discuss about, like, why now? I would say it was always eventually, it was always eventually going to happen with AWS because we're constantly focused on where are those big pain points and in cybersecurity, centralized logging at a, in a cost effective way with a standardized logging format. You know, that's that's kind of industry shaping, I, I would say. It's really a reinvention moment uh, for, for the industry. Uh, so, you know, it's. It always was going to happen. I think now, you know, the, the technology supports it, and we're really, you know, happy to see that these use cases are starting to unlock with different partners around the world. How how does AWS view the rise of interoperability? You know, Clint and Cribble, they talk about it all the time. Can you guys both talk about this interoperability aspect of it? Super important. Uh, absolutely, and actually, in, in my team, uh, Cloud Foundations, I run an organization here at AWS that's in charge of working with partners like Cribble on the security, identity, application observability side of the house. Uh, and so obviously uh, people are running things in all sorts of environments. Um, as a matter of fact, we've got a public website now for AWS hybrid and multi-cloud support. Um, so you can, you can look that up. That's actually my, my team helping create those, those, those concepts and solutions. Uh, so you'll always see us, you know, again, lean into where customers say they need help that's where we're going to be you know, steering towards and delivering different native services to help them there. So 100%, you know, uh, we definitely want to empower customers to run that full analysis, whether it's, whether it's predictive, proactive, or even reactive, like post incidents. We want them to be able to see a full story from endpoints, private data center, cloud, multiple clouds. We want them to be able to see the holistic story uh, and not have to make a, such a, a, a trade-off on that cost versus logging telemetry that's traditionally been an issue. By the way, quick quick props for you guys at AWS for solution-oriented thinking. Obviously tons of high-level services. This is one of the benefits of the partner network. So nice call out there, Ryan, appreciate that. And notable. Cribble uh, has been an interoperability too. Clint, what's your take on interoperability? You're, you're out in the front lines of your customers. Amazon's got solutions. You're putting it all together. You know, IT, <laughs> Security Lake you know, bridge that gap between the solution and the customer. I think this has been one of the, the kind of travesties of the security industry for the last, you know, 10 to 20 years is a lot of very verticalized solutions from vendors that are designed only to interoperate with, with their own. One of the things that I love about AWS that we share from a values perspective is truly being customers first and, and, and going out and offering customers those options. And when you, when you ask me like, what does Cribble sell? Often what I answer with is choice. Like we're giving our customers the ability to make choices uh, and the ability to, to make, continue to make different choices, no matter what other choices they've made in the past. And so for enterprises, you know, they come with years of decisions that have been made about, you know, various technologies that they've acquired or built, uh, and they need all that stuff to work together. Uh, and with a lot of vendors that are like, well, my stuff works with my stuff. And what I love about AWS and what I love about our products is, they really are customers first with the idea that we, we should be able to integrate anything and everything and make everything be able to talk to everything and truly give customers the ability to morph their technology solutions to fit the complex environments that they're dealing with today. Uh, and I think that that gives them the, the, the choice and the ability to continue to grow their enterprises and make new choices in the future that'll be right for them. And I think that's a great uh, segue to my next question, which is as you get all the security data lake in place, you got the interoperability. AI is driving the automation aspect of the infrastructure. Here, that bridge is only going to get accelerated. You mentioned more data, not enough budget, but now capabilities with the data to be actionable. You get the context, you got actionability. This is kind of where the action is right now uh, in, in the infrastructure and security, especially with the automation and AI coming where you can just get all the observed data, back it up, bring it on, you know, and then just manage it with, with software. So I think AI is going to really level the playing field and especially in the security operations center where if you talk to a lot of CISOs, their, their biggest challenge is people. Like I can't hire enough tier one people or tier two or tier three people to come go, you know, manage all of these threats that are, that are coming at me constantly. And so making a tier one SOC analyst, you know, giving them the power of just even the next tier up 
uh, in terms of being able to help them know what questions to ask of their data, help them you know take actions on behalf of the enterprise that historically would have been in, in run books and, and AI automated agents, I think is going to be a, a sea change for the industry. Still very early days. I don't think we have a lot of you know, customer success to stand on top of, but I think everybody sees the potential and everybody's racing uh, to try to level up all of the, the personnel in the enterprise. The, the key word is not yet. I mean, Ryan, this is where you guys are doing a lot of work on the AWS side. You know, we talk to Cribble all the time. This is the, this is the future, but you got to set the foundation, you know, literally and architecturally, because as automation comes in, you now can get the data, just bringing all the data in. It's more usable because you got cloud scale and you're going to have scale with, with software and AI coming. So again, perfect opportunity for the folks that were, you know, classic enterprises and, and big big data. I mean, <laughs> Clint, it you is, remember uh, big data days in 2010? You know, I, I was there. It's finally here, right? So now people got to put it in place. They got to put it into practice and start the operational shift. This is the big discussion. How do I set up my operations? to make sure we don't get foreclosed the benefits of AI. That's that's part of the that's part of the thing I just want to mention real fast. Uh, automation has been around for a while, but with, with Amazon Security Lake and the increased visibility you have across all of your security telemetry across your environment, this provides a finer resolution onto some of the factors that maybe, uh, maybe led to some uncomfortable feelings from certain CISOs or security teams to automate remediation or automate response based off of certain information coming in. Now they have a more clear picture. So that we see that confidence level in general of what people are willing to automate uh, increasing as a result of just having better visibility over those security logs. Clint, great time to be in security up with data. You've been in the data business for a long time. We mentioned big data throwback there, but you know, as the, I mean, security is a tough industry. Let's face it. The pace of play is high, it's fast. You got adversaries out there. You know, it's a great time to be in security is kind of a, 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 an interesting comment, but with, the, with data now, there's so much more capabilities. What's your view as you look at this from a, from a CEO perspective, founder, uh, and, and you've seen the wave hitting, what's going through your mind? Yeah, I think, for me, it's it's always about meeting the the challenges that we're hearing from you know our our CISO customers, which is how do we deal with a complex threat landscape? Uh, how do we continue to you know, like I mentioned earlier, scale the the people inside of that operation? And ultimately, uh, you can't ask questions of data you don't have. And so that's where I think you know a lot of the innovation around making this cost effective for enterprises and making it to where they can the the security budget you know. It is, it is a cost center, it's an insurance policy. And while we like to think that security budgets are always, always increasing, the CISOs that I talk to say, look, you know, I, I'm constrained and every dollar you save me here uh, is I can go deploy on people, on other new technologies that can really help, you know, give me confidence. Like Ryan said, that that we're, you know, that we're going to be able to find these big threats that are that are coming at us constantly. And, and honestly, you know, it's fatiguing think, to think about the battle that they're that they're facing every day. That the threats are coming every day. They never relent. And so, you know, how can we give them back? You know, the the choice and control that that give them the ability to go make them as secure as possible. Yeah, Ryan, this is exactly what we've been saying. Certainly, last year at reInvent. This year, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of security lake conversations going on. As your customers and partners look at the future, okay, what do you hope to see continue to progress in the coming months? And as this rolls out, what are some of the things that you expect to see happen from a product standpoint? Feel free to share some, some uh, open information there if you have it. No need to release any of the, the news coming out from reInvent probably, but you know, as you guys look forward, you have a roadmap, you have a vision. What do you hope to see with the, the security lake? Well, uh, I would say, look, the, the trend in terms of what to expect with security lake it's going to continue. We're going to double down with um, something common you've, you've seen AWS do, like remove undifferentiated heavy lifting from the value chain through partners like Cribble, through our mutual end customers that are utilizing these services. So, you know, we want to save people and those valuable scarce resources. As Clint mentioned earlier, security resources and even cloud security expert resources are even more scarce these days. They're in very high demand. So we'd like to continue pulling undifferentiated heavy lifting Normalizing log files, moving things around should should not fit. It should be a thing of the ancient past. I hope that's my own personal vision. 
Um, and you're going to continue to see this ecosystem of partners like Cribble that my, my team works with, uh, creating and inventing new unique ways either to make ingesting of different log sources easier, uh, or even you know the, the other half of this is once that data is there, the analytics, the predictive analytics, potentially you know different sort of levels of automation and uh, even comparing analytic sources and analytic uh, processes uh, right on right next to each other, doing a side by side compare to see what works best for your organization. You know, imagine imagine tailored analytics based off of the industry or vertical or similar companies of your size. Being able to see that uh, is just something I'm really hopeful for in the general partner community uh, that's surrounding the Amazon Security Lake service. The game is still the same. It's data, you got to store it, you got to analyze it. They're in logs, they're everywhere. Cripple search, Clint, is huge. You guys are, are talking about this as the first industry search in place query tool. Okay, uh, let's get into it. What's the big thing about it? Why is it important? Why is it the first? Why hasn't anyone done it before? So the problem that we're seeing, especially in the security operations center is that ironically kind of a problem that we created with stream, which is the customers want to put data in a lot of different places. And, and now the data is in a bunch of different places. And each one of those different places requires users to be trained on each of those experiences. And so these are all great engines and they have, they have great products that allow users to go deep dive and investigate. But now I need to be able to look across all of those all at once. I need to be able to look at the data in my existing tooling. I need to be able to look at the data at the edge that hasn't even moved yet. And then one of the things that we love about Security Data Lake is, you know, we believe Cribble Search is the first search in place solution, especially for security professionals that want, you know, a familiar pipe delimited query language and a, and a search bar that they're used to. But then let's say that they have a data scientist that wants to go, you know, work at that data and they're, you know, much more familiar with, uh, you know, writing Python or, you know, doing Spark jobs. That data is in open formats now, so they can go run any analysis tool on there. So while we hope that we are the best, I think that these open formats and open data lakes really align vendor and customer incredibly well. Uh, and, and we only charge for when you're actually running queries. So it's like a light switch, you turn it off, you're not using it, you're not getting value out of it, then we're only going to charge you for exactly what you're using. And I think that that also is a very, very fair way for, for vendors and customers to interacting, just like AWS does with their customers. And so we're really excited for the open future that's going to give customers choice in, in how they analyze this data rather than be forced to analyze it with the tool that they chose five or 10 years ago. And that's the only thing that can go get value out of that data. That's awesome. Clint Sharp, co-founder and CEO of Cribble, Ryan Orsi, worldwide head of Cloud Foundation Partners at AWS. Guys, this has been a great session. The folks watching in the industry and also customers and future prospects of Cribble being featured here. Guys, final, final word. I'll give you guys both the last um, take here. What should people be thinking about as they set the table for their organizations going forward? We kind of know what's coming, the big AI wave, it's the hype cycles, epic proportions, but this value here on the setup, this hype matches the, the prospects. We all kind of agree there's, up, there's upside here on AI and also for the bad guys too. So like, you know, it's a whole nother game, but it's going to be fast and, and, and a little loose right now, but it's going to bunker down. People are, are getting ready. What's your final take and advice to the practitioners watching? What should they, how should they prepare? How should they be thinking about rolling forward? Ryan, we'll start with you. Sure, sure I'll, I'll start that one, John. So uh, my, my general advice is don't go at it alone. We, we, we all know at the other end of the wire is an adversary. Uh, you need as much support as possible. So consider whether you're using a cloud like us, you're using a partner like Cribble, consider using and surrounding yourself with that ecosystem of third party support for yourselves. There's a lot of great minds on this, all dedicated towards helping you get to the the, the more uh, uh, elevated uh, position in your security posture of whatever you're running, wherever you're running it. So my general message, don't go at it alone. Build up your ecosystem of, of uh, great minds like Cribble, like AWS security, and we can all work together to, uh, to, to make things better for your, in your environment. Clint, take us home. The rise of the security data lakes is here. We're wrapping it up. Give the final word, put the plug in. Tell us, tell us what's up. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, customers need to think about their data management strategy. What got you to 2023 is not going to get you to 2033. And so you need to be developing a portfolio of tools for the right place to manage this data. We can help with that in both moving the data and searching the data. And we think that AWS Security Data Lake is uh, the most customer-friendly choice uh, on the market today. It's open. It's going to grow with you. 
Uh, and you own the data. And we're really, really excited about a f- future open ecosystem where customers get to take back control of their data. Clint, congratulations on all your success. Been watching your journey. Congratulations to the company and your team. Uh, keep at it, we'll see you around and uh, keep, keep plugging. And, and great to have you on the showcase. And Ryan, thanks for coming on board with him as, as uh, with AWS and partner there. So appreciate your time, gentlemen. Thanks for having thanks us. Thanks so much, Sean. Okay, this is the presentation of AWS Startup Showcase on cybersecurity. Season three, episode three, an ongoing series covering exciting startups from the AWS ecosystems. I'm, I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching.